This video is brought to you by Winterwood Games. Stick around to the end of the video to find out more about Winterwood and their unique line of products. So, here we are. We're now living in a post-Game of Thrones world, and I'll be honest, it feels pretty weird. This show has been a main staple of pop culture for almost a decade, and the joy or outrage it sparked across that time is unparalleled with any other TV show that's existed in my lifetime. And across the final six episodes, I think it's fair to say that the joy-to-outrage ratio was significantly tipped in one direction. Just to be clear, this is not going to be a video where I go through every episode and talk about every dumb thing that happened and rant endlessly because there are already dozens if not hundreds of videos like that available on YouTube right now. Because there were dozens if not hundreds of terribly stupid things that happened this season, and pretty much every single one has already been pointed out and harpooned, and also I don't want to just complain. Because I like Game of Thrones, I've always liked it. Even when watching the final season, I was consistently engaged and curious because I care about this world and these characters. So I want to evaluate season 8 in a more retrospective and general context, because I believe this season was the ending the show was building to in terms of quality, at least across the past two seasons. That may sound controversial, so I'll hit you with an even more controversial thesis to make my thoughts clear. Season 8 of Game of Thrones was never going to be good. Let's start back at the beginning, or at least my beginning with this show. I started watching Game of Thrones before Season 5 came out, so I binged through the best period of the show all at once, and I absolutely loved it. Even with a general awareness about certain story beats, character journeys, and or deaths that came from simply being on the internet while Game of Thrones existed, the big moments hit hard, and I couldn't wait to see what would happen next. It wasn't until after Season 6 that I started reading the books, and reading them actually gave me a new appreciation for how the show captured the spirit of the story while restructuring it for a new medium, never losing the core of A Song of Ice and Fire along the way. To me, the core of the series has always been consequences. Realistic consequences are rarely important in big, sprawling fantasy stories, and while you get some moral grayness and allegiance switching here and there, the lines between good and evil are usually drawn fairly clearly. George R. R. Martin was very aware of the traditions of fantasy when he was crafting Westeros, so he took a more nuanced approach to his characters. And, and all this stuff about uh, the Dark Lord is rising in the north, and you know, the, the good guys have to get together to fight him. Guys in handsome guys in white cloaks fighting really ugly guys who dress all in black. But my opinion has always been that the battle between good and evil is fought within the individual human heart. All of us have the capacity for good, all of us have the capacity for evil. In A Song of Ice and Fire, there aren't really any clear good guys or bad guys. It's more about nuanced political maneuvering, and morality often takes a back seat because of that. Even though the Starks are framed by the narrative as moral and good, their stubbornness in the face of the political world they enter is ultimately their downfall, and it's hard for the viewer to accept that they cause their own downfalls. And even though the Lannisters are often framed as closer to villains than heroes, they're still some of the most complex and layered characters in the show, and it's hard not to root for them at times. Again, it all comes back to consequences. Ned Stark, Rob Stark, Jon Snow, Tyrion Lannister, Jaime Lannister, Tywin Lannister, Cersei Lannister, Joffrey Baratheon, Oberyn Martell, and many more all make mistakes and pay for them. Each of their actions and consequences have fallout, big and small, which inspires further action and further consequence. And the last moment where the idea of consequence consequence had any real significance was the death of Jon Snow at the end of Season 5 which was then undone at the beginning of Season 6. Speaking of Season 6, that's where we can start to track Game of Thrones' gradual shift in quality. Season 6 was the first season that was written without any book material as a source, and it's important to consider that there were, and still are, no new books in sight. Now, I like Season 6 a lot. I think it's paced very well, the characters still feel true to themselves, and the one-two punch of The Battle of the Bastards and The Winds of Winter are without a doubt some of the best TV ever produced. And sure, maybe it just seemed better in comparison to the boring slog of Season 5, but still. As Season 6 was coming out, I saw some very noticeable changes across the episodes, and some creative choices that very much informed where the show was heading in terms of quality. Game of Thrones as an adaptation 
animation has always been very efficient in its simplifications, and I think across seasons 1 through 4, showrunners David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, who I'll refer to as D&D from here on out, did a fantastic job. Season 5 was a little shaky, but to be fair, they were trying to pare down roughly 2,000 pages of book into 10 episodes, so not the easiest thing in the world. With season 6, there was a very deliberate shift towards traditional blockbuster storytelling rather than the more low-key, dialogue-heavy storytelling of the books and early show. The show still felt like Game of Thrones, but characters started doing increasingly dangerous things without any consequences or getting critically wounded and just walking it off. Plot armor never really existed in Game of Thrones, except for Bronn, maybe, but now it was all over the place. As this was happening, the lines between good and evil became became more clearly defined. You were obviously supposed to love Jon and hate Ramsay, love Daenerys and hate Cersei, love Arya and hate Euron, etc. The sense of a multiplicity of perspectives kind of faded away, the show didn't humanize the villains at all, and the heroes were deified more than ever. In this season, the show also seemed more self-aware of its own reputation as a giant piece of pop culture, trying to entertain an enormous audience rather than a niche one. The action sequences had been getting steadily bigger and more more impressive with every season, but season 6 was the first time it felt like the show was building towards the action as the main focus, rather than focusing on the drama around it. There was also a noticeable increase in comedy, but without the same wit and bite the characters had before, especially Tyrion. To be fair, this was a result of the writers not having any book dialogue to work with, but to me, it felt like simplification was beginning to border on dumbing down. Overall, I did like this season, but I also acknowledged that Game of Thrones was going to be a different show without the books, and I could live with that. It was still great TV. But a proliferation of plot armor, the dumbing down of the story and characters, and increasing focus on humor and action weren't the end of the changes. They were just the beginning. Season 6 was a warning shot. Season 7 is garbage. I didn't like it when it came out, and I don't like it now. I made a video after Season 7 focused on the idea that Spectacle was overtaking the storytelling of Game of Thrones, and I stand by that 100%. This season just kind of meanders along, and the only points where it has any energy are when big battles are happening. Everything feels rushed and truncated, mainly as a result of the season only being 7 episodes long rather than the usual 10. Why wasn't I more concerned when D&D announced they were ending the show in 13 episodes? Why didn't I think that was a bad idea? As much as I like it when TV shows are wrapped up well and not stretched out unnecessarily, too little story can be just as big of a problem as too much. The main problem with the show at this point was that it was being constructed around original material from the writers, as well as notes from George Martin about how the story was allegedly going to develop in his books. So, while I'm sure D&D wanted to be true to Martin's ideas and plans for the story and characters, they have a very different storytelling style from Martin, and that dissonance had grown increasingly obvious as the two versions of the story diverged. The show was shifting towards a much more traditional, grand, epic fantasy series, and the attempts to recapture the political maneuvering felt embarrassingly off. The entire subplot with Sansa, Arya, and Littlefinger was so dumb, I just… I hate it. Again, the show seemed to be aware of its own reputation, and in Season 7, it really started playing to its audience rather than staying true to its source. And there's nothing wrong with that in theory. When long-running TV shows approach their end, they tend to get a little sentimental and retrospective. But Game of Thrones never felt like it needed that. I wouldn't say Season 7 rewarded characters for their decisions, but they definitely didn't face many consequences. Jon got tackled into a frozen lake and was surrounded by the entire army of the dead, and still made it back home because one guy slowed down the whites for like two seconds. Characters did increasingly stupid things and were saved at the very last minute, and if this show had still been the real Game of Thrones, characters would have died in these scenarios. By the end of Season 7, the show had very clearly transformed into something different, something more conventional and more focused on entertainment than anything. Now, I generally like watching reaction videos for things I enjoy, I like fan excitement over big moments and I really enjoy Sean Tanktop's channel, so this isn't me attacking those guys at all. 
but they're kind of the greatest example of how this show fell apart. Provoking these kinds of reactions is not what made Game of Thrones work. It was everything but that. It was the kind of show you had to pay close attention to, following the schemes and plans of various characters and tracking complex emotional arcs. And then it became a show where a bunch of people could watch it in a bar and scream and cheer for minutes on end and miss nothing, and that's a shame. If anything, Season 7 seemed directed towards viewing the show like that just big, exciting blockbuster entertainment. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not what the show started out as at all. By the end of the season, the show felt completely different, but the stage was set for an exciting, interesting culmination in Season 8. I liked where the characters were, I just wasn't a big fan of how they got there. My only hope was that Season 8 would give us all a good ending, and tie up the few plot threads that remained in a satisfying way or maybe in a very unsatisfying way, because Game of Thrones had never been about satisfying its audience in a traditional way. And I kind of got both. Through seasons 6 and 7, the characters were reduced down to their most basic elements, and their handling in season 8 was very reflective of that. It felt like every character was reiterating the same point over and over again in every scene they were in, for no reason besides repetition. She is my queen. Nobody was doing anything intelligently, there didn't appear to be any planning or strategy for anything, and despite the fact that there were two major battles that took up almost three hours worth of screen time, it felt like the heroes just kind of made it up as they went. Since the show was no longer being driven by the characters, but rather by spectacle, the characters were left without much to do. Situations were contrived by which characters had the illusion of importance, but given the impressive number of abandoned storylines in Season 8, it was only an illusion. The characters at the forefront of the story were the only ones that did anything, while side characters just kind of showed up and talked to them occasionally, and then left and or died and or had sex. As for the main characters, nobody had time to properly develop believable dynamics or relationships. Jon and Daenerys didn't have a deep, meaningful connection. The show just told us they did and expected us to believe it. And sure, the entirety of episode 2 was devoted to characters bonding and reminiscing, but I found that episode mostly boring, and any development that happened between characters was dropped by episode 4. The characters weren't active participants in any aspect of the story except for battles. Cersei, who previously orchestrated the empowerment of the Faith Militant and destroyed the Sept of Baelor to eliminate her enemies, just kind of stood around and then died. This level of passivity, which can also be seen in characters like Jon, Tyrion, and Jaime, felt so untrue to those characters, especially Tyrion, who was previously one of the most intelligent characters on the show, but made stupid decision after stupid decision throughout Season 8, and also Season 7. Because when you really think about it, if characters were actually intelligent, the story couldn't have unfolded this way. As a result of the generally lazy writing this season, the decisions that characters made almost always made no sense. So, when the big emotional moments had to happen, they didn't quite land because a character Characters' actions leading up to them were either illogical or rushed to a conclusion that felt unnatural. And after the Battle of Winterfell, every character seemed invincible. Almost everyone was trapped in a situation where they certainly should have been dead at some point. Characters were either completely surrounded by or buried by zombies at different points in the episode, and yet they were still able to escape when one other person came to help them. As a result, what should have been the most epic, heartbreaking, destructive battle in the show ended up killing four or five side characters, and no, I don't care about Jorah. And Lyanna Mormont got to kill a giant zombie because fans thought she was really funny in one scene two seasons ago. Along with Bronn, there was no real reason for Lyanna to be around except fans like her, and that's pretty antithetical to how Game of Thrones used to work. Ultimately, I think the show wanted to have its cake and eat it too. It wanted the reputation for killing characters, but also wanted to keep the real fan favorites alive. Again, the show was playing to its audience more than staying true to its own story and tone, and the way the story ended is very indicative of that. Plus, the fact that Clegane Bowl actually happened is hilarious. It was a joke. We were joking. The fact that the characters were pretty much useless by the end happened because the structure of the story was so fractured, a problem that starts from the bedrock of the writing.
Like I mentioned before, these final few seasons were written based on ideas from George Martin about where the story in the books is apparently heading. I have no doubt that most, if not all, of the big moments and character endings we got in the season 8 finale were based on Martin's ideas. However, I suspect that these ideas were given to D&D looking like this, and they had to figure out how to get there from the end of season 6, which was more than a little bit of a jump in some places. But that's not impossible, except they only wanted to do 13 more episodes, which, again, I don't know why I didn't get more nervous about that. They probably should have taken a few more seasons or episodes to tell this story properly, which Martin and HBO were willing to give them, and I get it, they've been working on this one project for a decade and they want to move on creatively. But if that's the case, then maybe hand the show to new showrunners, give them an idea of where the story should go and how to get there, then go make some Star Wars movies. But hey, this was their show and they should be allowed to end it on their terms, and they did. The only problem is that it came way too fast. Again, the endings they were given probably looked something like this, and they had to get there in 13 episodes. Except the characters, as established by the end of Season 6, didn't really fit those endings, but in the span of only 13 episodes, they had to get there. Maybe they should have made a few more episodes. If I'm right, and if these character conclusions are planned for the books, I'm pretty confident they'll be executed in a way that makes sense based on how that story develops. As for the show, well... Daenerys changed from a ruthless but merciful queen to a genocidal maniac who killed hundreds of thousands of innocent people and wanted to conquer the world, and then she died. Jaime reversed on seven seasons of character development and went back to Cersei, and then died. And the most baffling of them all, Arya, who spends most of episodes 1 through 4 talking about how important it is for the Starks to stick together, abandons her family twice in a row. It felt like the big moments this season, the dramatic character moments that were supposed to hit the audience hard, were oriented around surprising the audience above all else. Things like Rhaegal being sniped out of the sky by scorpion cannons, Masan Day being randomly captured and executed, Varys being burned by Drogon because he forgot how to be sneaky, I guess. The logical explanations for these moments are flimsy at best, and when a show is built on logic and grounded human drama as heavily as Game of Thrones, you can't just throw that out the window at the last minute like it's Bran Stark or something. Speaking of which, empty surprise can especially be seen in who ends up sitting on the Iron Throne, Bran, who I certainly never would have expected, but only because it's dumb and also because it's really dumb. The idea to make Bran King was confirmed by Isaac Hempstead Wright to have come directly from George Martin, but I'm pretty sure whatever path the books take will flesh out that decision a bit more. But even in the show, it could have worked. It may have been a more effective conclusion if the writers hadn't treated Bran like a meme for three seasons leading up to it. And who has a better story than Bran the Broken? Yeah, Bran's story is so good we didn't see any of it for an entire season. I didn't even think there would be another king, because when Drogon burned the Iron Throne, the coolest visual of the season and one of the best of the show, what that symbolically meant to me was that the old monarchy system was being destroyed and burned away. See, Drogon understood the finer points of symbolic significance, but I guess the writers didn't because having Bran be made king in the next scene of the episode kind of killed that significance. I'm not saying it's bad the show tried to surprise people, I'm saying they have to build to those surprises, like the show had before, but they forgot about the building part. When Game of Thrones first came out, it quickly gained a reputation for being a show that shocked viewers and subverted expectations at every turn. The death of Ned Stark, the Red Wedding, Joffrey's death, Jon's death, and countless other moments were built to naturally across the show. Again, the recurring thematic backbone of those events was consequences. However, when the show ran out of book material, it started to lean on the idea of shocking audiences and subverting expectations more and more, as if the idea of subverting version is what people liked. But the build-up was just as crucial, leading the characters to those points through natural developments, based on their personalities and the personalities of the characters around them, and the world they inhabited. In Season 8, there's no build-up. Things just happen as they need to happen to lead to a planned endpoint, strung together by some of the loosest logic I've ever seen. And, in some cases, not strung together at all. The show paid some lip service to Daenerys' turn to madness, but foreshadowing something 
something in Season 2 doesn't mean a very sudden transformation is justified in the span of an hour in Season 8. The burning of King's Landing felt more like it was intended to surprise the audience than anything, because that seems to be the motivation for any twist this season. For, oh god, I think it's probably three years now or something, we've known that it was going to be Arya who delivers that, that fatal blow. She seemed like the best candidate provided we weren't thinking about her in that moment. We hope to kind of avoid the expected, and Jon Snow has always been the hero, the one who's been the savior, but it just didn't seem right to us. If the only reason for a major story choice like that is it will be surprising, maybe take a step back and think about the story you're telling. It doesn't really matter though, because despite being the ultimate force of evil throughout the entire show, the Night King was killed in a very cheap, easy way, and then never referenced again. It seems like D&D don't plan their stories out too far in advance, which is fine, you don't need to have every single beat of your story mapped out from the start. But A Song of Ice and Fire never felt improvisational, everything felt deliberate and intentional, even with surprising twists taking the story in new directions. Maybe sometime in the two years they took to make season 8, D&D could have planned something, or made it cohesive at least. But no, instead they rushed towards an ending that ultimately felt unearned. It's not hard to surprise people with storytelling, but it still has to make sense. The final note of Game of Thrones is surprisingly positive. The tyrants are all defeated, and the good guys are in positions of ultimate power. Sansa is ruling the North, Bran is ruling what is now the Six Kingdoms, and Arya and Jon are able to go off and explore the free world. At the beginning of Season 8, it was very clear who was supposed to be a hero and who was supposed to be a villain, and the heroes won. The only exception to this was Daenerys, but when she died, she was very clearly framed as a villain, so my point still stands. And and then there's the new small council, composed entirely of characters the audience likes, who all probably should have died at some other point this season, like the Battle of Winterfell. Why is Bronn Master of Coin? They say they need a Master of War, just make Bronn Master of War. All he does is fight in wars. The more I think about this season, I don't get angrier, I'm just more disappointed. Because when you think about all the enormous shifts in power that have happened in Westeros across the show, all of the apocalyptic events and and horrendous destruction, everything is wrapped up so neatly. At the end of the story, the overall structure of Westeros is pretty much the same. Tyrion might say they're breaking the wheel, but it's more like they're replacing it with a slightly different wheel. And don't get me wrong, I didn't want some ending where democracy was established and Arya and Gendry lived happily ever after in Storm's End or something. But the tone of this ending, finishing this story on such a victorious note, feels disingenuous to what had come before. Game of Thrones wasn't a show without positive scenes scenes and victories for the characters, but it never felt like a show that had to be this outwardly rewarding for the audience. And it all comes back to that big thematic backbone that was lost around season 6, which is consequences. The characters may lose significant things across season 8, but they never really have to pay for their choices. The only real consequence Jon has to deal with is losing Daenerys, who he's known for about a month in the show's timeline, I think? And despite the fact that he, you know, murdered the queen, he got off scot-free and got to travel beyond the wall to live the rest of his life in peace with his wildling friends. By the end of the finale, Game of Thrones had become a typical, cliched fantasy story about good against evil when it had started as the opposite. I won't be so dramatic as to call Season 8 a betrayal to the audience, but I would call it a betrayal of the show. So in the end, I can't say that I liked this season, but it's definitely not the worst thing in the world. The production design is incredible, and in terms of cinematography and visual effects, there's never been a TV show that looks this good, at least when you can see what's going on. I was entertained in the moment for the majority of the season, so I guess as far as big, exciting blockbuster entertainment goes, it, it worked. But that's not what Game of Thrones was about. That's not what made it a phenomenon. That's not why so many people, including me, gravitated towards it so strongly. 
Once the writers ran out of books to adapt, it was clear the show was going to be different, but season 7 and 8 just dropped the ball so severely. Despite the very limp and disappointing ending, I still think D&D accomplished something truly incredible by bringing A Song of Ice and Fire to TV in a way that felt so true to those books, and for raising the bar of what TV could do cinematically. Everyone involved in every department that crafted the aesthetic of the show are masters, and the actors brought the characters to life so beautifully. I hope everyone has long and successful careers ahead of them. It's undeniable that Game of Thrones changed television forever, and like Lord of the Rings, people are going to try to replicate that success for a long time after it's gone. I just wish I could look back on the ending of this show as fondly as I look back at the beginning, and sometimes you just don't get that with TV, that's life. And if I ever get around to re-watching it, I'll probably just stop at the end of season 4 and pretend that's where it ended. Game of Thrones deserved a better ending, but I was pretty sure we weren't going to get one since season 6. They had the pieces in place, they just couldn't stick the landing. The, the King's Landing, if you will. There were so many things the show set up early on that I couldn't wait to see get resolved, and while I did get some big moments, so many of them were just thrown aside without any reference that it didn't feel clever or subversive, just tired and lazy. And while the production side of this show was anything but lazy, the story of Game of Thrones is what made it so iconic. So it's unfortunate that by the time Game of Thrones ended, the story had already been dead for years. If you're a fan of fantasy shows like Game of Thrones, then you may have dabbled in Dungeons & Dragons in the past, and that's where Winterwood Games comes in. Winterwood is an artisan woodworking company dedicated to combining quality craftsmanship and unique design. They currently offer five species of domestic and exotic wood dice trays, utilizing a professional-grade laser cutter to adorn the pieces with limited edition or custom designs. Check out their social media for frequent updates on products and behind the the scenes looks into the creation process. All orders are facilitated through Etsy so you won't have to worry about any complications. Check out Winterwood Games and enjoy the adventure. So, those are my thoughts on Game of Thrones Season 8 and the way it all fell apart at the end. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please feel free to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.